In this video, we're going to take a look at the European Serengeti. We're all familiar with the African Serengeti. Vast grasslands with areas of thorny scrub and patches of trees. Countless large herbivores like elephants, wildebeest and giraffes. And ferocious predators including lions, cheetahs and hyenas. But what isn't well known is that every continent had their own version of the Serengeti. We're going to take a look at what the European Serengeti was, the best examples that it still has and what it could look like in the future after some rewilding. In this video we're mainly going to look at the temperate regions of mainland Europe as the other regions would have a different makeup to their Serengeti equivalent. But I hope to do videos on those in the future as well as Serengeti videos for the other continents. 30,000 years ago Europe had a Serengeti just as amazing as the one we see in Africa today. There were giant straight tusked elephants which are one of the two largest mammal species that ever lived weighing up to 13 tons, more than twice the weight of today's largest elephants. There were forest rhino, there were hippos even larger than the African hippo, megaloceros, also called the giant Irish deer, and moose, and also red deer, fallow deer, and roe deer, a host of wild cattle species including aurochs, the extinct ancestor of domestic cattle, European bison, and European water buffalo, tarpan, Europe's extinct wild horse, which only went extinct in 1879, is the horse that all domestic horses are descended from. There were wild boar plowing up the soil and millions of the alien-like saiga antelope grazing. This huge array of animals were hunted by an equally impressive clade of predators. Cave lions, which were even bigger than the Siberian tiger, the largest living cat. European leopards and giant European cheetahs, much bigger than today's cheetah. The scimitar-toothed cat, or homotherium, a relative of Smilodon, which was about the size of present-day lions. The huge cave bear, although they were predominantly vegetarian. Cave hyenas, a close relative of today's spotted hyena, but bigger and likely hairier. Striped hyenas also lived in Europe, probably in areas where they could avoid their larger relatives. And of course, the European predators we still have, brown bears, lynx and wolves, coexisted with this impressive group of meat eaters. These predators had many different roles and niches. Some preferred the open grasslands. Some would have hidden in thorny scrub areas with hawthorn and blackthorn. Others may have shaded under huge Scots pine, oak and beech trees. Some lived almost entirely in wooded areas waiting to ambush their prey. Many of these animals went extinct or at least were lost to Europe. Like all large scale extinction events, there were multiple causes. The climate was cooling and the last glacial maximum, the coldest point of the ice age, was coming. This occurred between 26,000 and 20,000 years ago. While the animals were struggling to adapt to a new climate or find warmer regions to move to, they were being hunted and outcompeted by a predator that they were unable to deal with, humans. Many extinct animal remains from that period in Europe have been discovered with evidence of hunting wounds and butcher marks on their bones inflicted by human weapons. The animals I mentioned went extinct at various stages between 25,000 years ago all the way up to the 1800s. The extinction of one animal can often cause a chain reaction of extinctions as some animals rely on other animals to create their habitat or food. Some of the animals have endured and still live alongside us today. Europe is arguably the most nature depleted of all the continents. Our mixed grasslands were lost with the herds of animals who created them and today Europe is dominated by farmland and woodlands. There are some slivers still remaining and we'll take a look at what they are. Oostverderplassen is a Dutch rewilding project that aimed to restore the European grassland scrubland ecosystem. Scrubland is just a grassland much like we see in the African Serengeti that has lots of scrub scrub being thorny plants and other shrubs. In Oostverderplassen, they have wild herds of heck cattle and conic ponies as substitutes for their ancestors, the aurochs and tarpan. Heck cattle are a breed of cattle that were backbred to resemble the aurochs using primitive cattle breeds and conic ponies are one of the horse breeds that are most genetically similar to the tarpan. There are also hundreds of red deer and roe deer. This project saw a huge boost to biodiversity and has vast amounts of bird life. White-tailed eagles have found a home there somewhere people previously thought wouldn't suit them, but it's likely it's the exact type of ecosystem they evolved in. The Oder Delta in Poland and Germany has moose, European bison, red deer, roe deer and primitive horses grazing and browsing, wild boar digging and rootling, beavers creating and changing wetlands, and wolves, lynx, eagles, foxes and badgers hunting and scavenging. The waters there are also home to the grey seal and the huge Atlantic sturgeon. The best present day example of a European Serengeti was born out of a tragic incident. It is the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Due to the radiation, humans had to abandon the region and so nature took over. There are areas of grassland, scrubland and woodland. Moose, bison, red deer, roe deer and wild boar recolonized the area. 
a herd of Chevalsky's horses were introduced. These are close relatives of the extinct European wild horse and are native to the steppes of Asia. Wolves, lynx and brown bears are all found there, hunting the herbivores. Feral dogs and cats are thriving. Badgers, foxes, otters, pine martens and even the non-native raccoon dogs, which were either escapees or intentional releases from fur farms, can all be found there. Three species of eagle returned, including the greater spotted eagle, which had been essentially extinct in Europe. Many of the buildings are now inhabited by animals such as bears, dogs and cats. Nearly every wild animal that can be found in Europe can be found in Chernobyl. It just shows that if nature is given space, it can return and thrive even under such terrible circumstances. Now let's discuss what it would look like if we were to restore the European Serengeti. Examples like Nepp Estate in England and Usvaderplassen in the Netherlands are proving to be incredible for biodiversity and showing that wild grasslands or scrublands are also brilliant carbon sinks. Rewilding is proving to be a brilliant tool in saving our planet, so we should do as much of it as possible. First we'll look at what we could optimistically achieve in the near future if we were to create large spaces for nature. Of course, we can have the animals already living in Europe, so moose, red deer, fallow deer and roe deer, sounders of wild boar, beavers with their dams and lodges creating habitat for waterfowl, reptiles and amphibians, bison grazing, browsing and wallowing, all being pursued by wolves, lynx and bears. Golden jackals have even colonised most of mainland Europe in recent years. Rewilding Europe and some other conservation and rewilding groups have already started introducing some animals lost to Europe. The Tauros program is an initiative to recreate the aurochs through backbreeding its domestic descendants and rewilding Europe are using them to boost biodiversity across their projects. Primitive horse breeds such as the Exmoor Pony and Conic Pony are being used as a proxy or substitute for their extinct ancestor, the Tarpan. Asian water buffalo are filling in for the extinct European water buffalo in multiple projects. The critically endangered Saiga antelope has been reintroduced to some projects in Ukraine. Kulan, a wild relative of the donkey, which was once native across Eastern Europe, have also been reintroduced to a number of sites. Could we see countries in Europe come together and set aside large tracts of land and connect them with wildlife corridors and have all these animals live alongside each other and recreate the European Serengeti, where humans could visit and be awed but take nothing other than memories? But what about the other animals Europe has lost? Humans weren't the reason that all of them went extinct to Europe, but they certainly played a part and many of the animals went extinct purely by overhunting and habitat loss at the hands of humans. But most importantly, we've prevented large animals from colonising Europe once more. How could Asian elephants, tigers and rhinos expand their range and fill the niches of their extinct European relatives when humans have hunted them almost to extinction and wiped out their habitat? Colonization by large animals is often slow because they have to adapt and evolve to the new environments as they colonize, but time and time again, nature has shown us that when a niche is there to be filled, the animals will eventually fill it. Can we undo some of the harm we've done and introduce some animals to act as proxies for their extinct relatives? Let's take a look at what Europe could be like in a few decades if we were to enact this type of rewilding. Sadly, the straight-tusked elephant was lost to Europe. There are three species of elephants still in the world today, but unfortunately, they're adapted to tropical and subtropical climates, so it's unlikely they'd do well in temperate Europe. The five living rhino species are also adapted to warmer climates, so would likely be unable to fill the niche of their extinct relative, the forest rhino. Sadly, it seems like the introduction of rhinos or elephants is unlikely to work. Elephants are vital ecosystem engineers. They break and knock trees and branches, which sounds bad, but actually it's brilliant for biodiversity, as it allows sunlight to hit the ground and create meadows and also prevents forests from taking over grassland areas. Bison, cattle and other large herbivores do this too, but no animal does it like the elephant. Europe was also home to the cave hyena and striped hyena. There are four species of hyena on earth today, but it's likely that only the striped hyena would do well in temperate climates. Could we reintroduce it to Europe and see it feeding on animal carcasses alongside other European scavengers like griffin vultures, red kites and ravens? The giant Irish deer, with antlers spanning 12 feet or 3.7 meters, and cave bears, much bigger than today's bears, once roamed across Europe and Asia. Unfortunately, they're extinct, but their closest living relatives, the fallow deer and brown bear respectively, are still with us and will have to carry the flag for their cousins. What about the big cats we've lost? Europe still has the lynx and European wildcat, but it's lost all its top feline predators, the cave lion, similar toothed cat, European leopard and the giant cheetah. Sadly, 
the cheetah we see today is adapted to the heat and likely wouldn't be able to fill the role of the giant cheetah. Lions could probably take the cold a little better, but it's thought they wouldn't do well in snowy winters. However, tigers and leopards live in temperate and even boreal climates in Asia. It's very likely that those two species would have colonized Europe if humans weren't in the way. So could we introduce them to the European Serengeti to fill the niches of their relatives? in turn giving leopards and tigers a lifeline and spreading their population. Could we see a tiger pounce on a bison from behind a holly tree on the edge of the grassland? Could we see a leopard stashing a fallow deer on the branch of an oak? Can you imagine huge grasslands spotted in trees and ponds in Europe once again, where a brown bear scares a leopard off its freshly killed zyga antelope, where wolves hunt herds of aurochs and tarpan? Can you imagine going on a safari in Europe with wildlife to rival the Serengeti of Africa. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Would you like to see another Serengeti video for a different continent or region? If so, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.